Hello friends, I'm Joy Chu, a former scientist turned content creator, and the goal of my YouTube channel is to help people discover the joy of cooking with science. As we go full swing into baking season, I wanted to answer an important question that comes up. What apple should I use for pie? The short answer is that apple varieties that are crisp, firm, and tart tend to be the best for baking, and while apples generally taste good raw, different apples will bake differently. The best apples will turn out flavorful and firm with just the right amount of tenderness, while not so ideal apples will turn out bland, too sweet, or even mushy. For today's video, I'm going to do a taste test by baking galettes with three different varieties, and then I'll share the science behind choosing the right apple. I'm making a galette, aka a lazy person's pie, because it's way easier than classic pie. But everything in this video applies 100% to regular pies. So these are the three varieties that I'll be testing today. Granny Smith, Lady Alice, similar to Honeycrisp, and lastly, Fuji. Here's how I made the galette, which I adapted from Jacques Pépin's country apple galette recipe. To make the pâte brisée, or French short crust pastry, I combined 188 grams of all-purpose flour with three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt in my food processor. Then I add 168 grams of cold unsalted butter and pulse everything for about five seconds. As I keep processing the dough, I pour in one third of a cup of iced water, which keeps the dough tender and flaky. Once the ingredients have just come together, I take out the dough, pat it into a disc, and wrap it in plastic wrap, letting it chill in the fridge for at least 20 minutes. In the meantime, I peel three apples, equivalent to about a pound, quarter and core them, and then cut them into thin slices. After the dough has been sufficiently chilled, I lightly flour my working surface, and then roll the dough out to about a 14 inch by 12 inch oval. To assemble the galette, I use my rolling pin to transfer the dough onto an aluminum baking sheet, and place one layer of apple slices onto the dough, leaving a one inch border. Then I sprinkle a tablespoon of granulated sugar with cinnamon, nutmeg, and cardamom, and drizzle about a tablespoon of miso caramel. Then I add a second layer of apples, sprinkle another tablespoon of spiced sugar, and fold the edges over. As a finishing touch, I add one tablespoon of butter cut up into small cubes to help cook the top evenly and keep it from burning. The galette goes into the oven for 24 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until the crust starts to turn golden brown. For the last step, I drizzle some more miso caramel on top for that delicious, sweet, salty flavor. See how easy that was? It's nice to make something as tasty as regular pie with less than half the effort. So I've got a slice of each of the galettes here, labeled with their respective types and cooled to room temperature. I'm going to taste each one individually and then tell you what I think of the flavor and texture. At the end, I'll tell you which apple type I liked most. So I'm going to start with Granny Smith apples first, which are fairly crisp, very sour, and bright in flavor when raw. These apples look like they held up pretty well after baking, but let's see how it tastes. So in terms of flavor, definitely still getting a lot of sour, which makes sense because they started out pretty sour. Um, you still get that bright apple flavor, which is really nice. Um, in terms of texture, I'm actually surprised that they softened more than I expected. Um, I feel like because they started out crisp and tart, I thought that they would be pretty raw or undercooked, I guess, after baking, but they've softened quite a lot. Now I'm going to try the Lady Alice apples. They've been compared with Honeycrisp apples and they're very crisp, mildly sweet, and kind of tart in the aftertaste. And they also look like they held up pretty well. So let's see how they taste. So in terms of flavor, you do get a little bit of the tart. I feel like it kind of loses its appleness. Like you taste more of the, like the miso caramel, 
Um, but in terms of texture, these are pretty firm. They didn't soften as much. So I guess for these Lady Alice apples, they're good for baking if you want. A little bit firm, um, but some apple flavor, but not very much apple flavor. So for the last galette, I'll be tasting some Fuji apples. These guys are still crisp, but unlike the other two, they're a little less firm, more juicy, and much sweeter. So we'll see how these guys taste. And I almost forgot my tradition of saying bon appétit. So bon appétit. So this one is actually kind of confusing because um, in terms of the flavor, like you definitely get the sweetness, which is nice. Um, but in terms of the texture, I was sort of expecting this to be softer, but it's actually quite firm. The apples have held up pretty well. I guess the only big downside is that the crust is fairly wet because these apples are really juicy. And so during the baking process, they kind of let out kind of all of their water content. So you can definitely tell the crust is soggy, um, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your preference. The apples are quite good though. They're, they're nice and sweet um, and they have a nice texture. So for the moment of truth, which apple type did I like the most? Now, this was a tough choice. And I have to say, for second place, I surprisingly like the Fuji apples. They still remain firm, and they had this really nice, warm, sweet apple flavor that came out. Uh, the crust wasn't that great, not my fave, but I think the flavor won out the sort of texture of the galette for me. Now, for first place, I enjoyed the Lady Alice apples the most. I think it had a good, well-balanced flavor, and I really like the firm texture of the apples. For the Granny Smith apples, uh, I wasn't as much of a fan of the really tart forward soft texture of the apples, but if you like soft and sour, then go for it. Okay, I know that taste tests can seem kind of arbitrary sometimes, so I'm going to explain the science behind why choosing the right apple matters. So why do crisp, firm, tart apples tend to work better? The answer has to do with the apple structure and how it responds to heat. Think of an apple cell like these Ziploc bags filled with water. An apple is crisp and firm because the outside, the cell wall, is able to hold all of this water inside. In between neighboring cells, there's a structural component called the middle lamella that keeps the cells together kind of like this tape. When you bake apples in the oven, the heat starts to break down the cell wall and the lamella, leading to cells eventually collapsing and everything inside leaking out. But for apples that have stronger structures, they're able to withstand the heat better so they can hold on to their shape and flavor even after going through the ringer, so to speak. Now, what about the tartness? A more tart apple tends to hold up better while baking because acidity strengthens pectin, a very important part of the cell wall and lamella. As a side note, this is why some people add lemon juice while baking apple pies and crisps. You can potentially salvage less ideal apples with a little bit of lemon juice, but if you don't want the lemon flavor to mask the apples, it's best to start with some good baking apples from the beginning. After all, you don't want to ruin your pie with a couple of bad apples, am I right? Thanks for watching. To get the full recipe with notes, subscribe to my free Substack newsletter. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep learning more about the science of everyday cooking, like and subscribe to my channel below. As a heads up, I'll be doing a part two video on pie pastry at the end of next month, so stay tuned for that. Happy fall baking and see you next time. Bye bye. And everything inside. Leaks out. Nope. Did that work? Uh, well, it's oh. not on camera. Oh. Uh. Did I miss? You. I missed. <laughs>
Lady Alice, similar to Honeycrisp. And lastly, Fuji. Oh, oh no! Thank you.